Hello friends. I'm sure many of you may have heard of or worked with smart capture forms in cloud pages. But when you need more control and flexibility, developers often use custom HTML forms to collect data from users and then process the submitted data. In today's video, we'll be reviewing how you can process such custom HTML forms in landing pages. Now to start with, let's review some of the various ways in which you can process custom HTML forms in landing pages. The most simplest design would be to build the custom form in a landing page and when the user clicks submit, the data is posted to another landing page where you can write uh, AMP script or SSDS code to process the data. And then you can show the user a relevant success message in the second landing page uh, or you can have them redirect it back to the first landing page. Now remember, every time a landing page is loaded or accessed, one super message is consumed. So in this design, you will end up spending at least two super messages, one when the first landing page is loaded and the second uh, uh, when you actually get redirected to the second landing page for processing. Now, if you end up redirecting back to the first landing page, then the super message count goes up to three. Now, for one user, this may not be seen as a big deal, right? But in the long run, when you have more and more customers using the form to submit data or even when you're doing testing, um, for the landing pages and cloud pages and all that, you will have wasted super messages which you could have actually used elsewhere, right? So uh, the second design that you can think of is to use a single landing page and have the form submit to itself. At first, this might look uh, like an okay design, but again, the same landing page gets loaded twice, right? So you still end up consuming two super messages at a minimum. Now, some of you may have heard that um, like you know, code resources uh, in cloud pages do not consume super messages. So why not use these for form processing? Well, you've heard correct. Code resources are in fact ideal for this. So in this design, uh, the third one that you'll see here, you can see how we can post the data to a JSON code resource, have the processing done using AMP script or SSGS code that you can write and then return a JSON response back to the landing page. But here again, when the response is redirected back, the landing page gets reloaded again, ending up with two super messages. Also note that this um, um, uh, JSON code resource or the any code resource for that matter, we cannot actually show HTML output. Okay, They have specific output formats like JavaScript, CSS, JSON, XML, etc. So you will need to rely on a landing page to output HTML content and display to the user. That's why you have to redirect back to a landing page. Okay. Unless and until you have a use case where you don't need to do that, like you know, but in most cases when a user submits a form, you definitely want to you know show a response back to them. So that comes um, to our final um, you know design that we can even review as well. It's uh, similar to the the landing page JSON code resource pair that we saw in design three, but instead of doing a synchronous form submit and redirect, we will send the data asynchronously to the code resource. Now we can do this using multiple ways, and uh, I'll show you two of these uh, in today's video. First is using Ajax XHR, which is XML HTTP request. And the second is the fetch API. Now the advantage is that you end up uh, loading the landing page just once and hence consume only one super message. And also the user does not end up waiting for the page to reload as the processing happens asynchronously and will be updated to the screen when it's ready. Okay. Now do note that these designs are only relevant if you are using marketing clouds, cloud page resources. If you have external sites, uh, portals where you uh, would uh, redirect the user to, then you don't need to worry about super messages. Okay, so what I've done is uh, I've created two landing pages which have the same UI. Um, I will use uh, Ajax uh, XHR for the first one and then uh, the Fetch API for the second one. And for the data processing, uh, what I've done is I've created a JSON uh, code resource uh, in which I've used AMP script to process the form data and then output a JSON which will which we will receive back in the main landing page in these two landing pages. Okay, and I'm using uh, the five fields that you see here. Um, they are actually like you know from a uh, DE that I have which is called sample sendable DE. So when the data is submitted, the processing should insert the record into this DE. Now I'm just using a simple example here. Uh, I'm not checking for existing or duplicate records for updates and all that. So you can always modify the scenario as needed for your use case. Okay, so um, it's uh, demo time. So I'll show you how the functionality works first and then we will deep dive into the code part. Okay, so I'm going to use the uh, XHR form first. So let me go ahead and just type in my name. Uh, just give some sample data here. So I'll just use one of my emails. Okay, and I'll just give a random number. Okay, I'm just going to leave the email opt-in field as uh, true. Okay, so I click on submit. 
and then you will see the message comes back uh, status is okay thank you for submitting a profile data has been success uh, updated successfully and in the console um, i'm actually logging the return uh, json as uh, back from the uh, json code resource as well so we can always view it in, in case you need to like look at or if you're debugging okay so here you can see the status is okay with that was passed back which you can see what is what i've outputted here along with the message and then the parameters that actually got passed from this page to the code resource also i'm actually returning that back okay so you can see all the data that i passed to the um, json code resource asynchronously okay so let's uh, uh, go and check our db here if i click on this and then click cancel just to refresh the de so you will see uh, this particular uh, record has just been entered okay so now we'll do the same thing through the fetch api so i'll just go ahead and give my name again this time i'll use a different uh, uh, email id here okay let's or you will come one two three four i'm just giving a random number again and i'm not going to use the email opt-in so let me click on submit and then you'll see i'm getting a similar message again back um, and here in the output that you'll see that this is a json uh, response that i'm getting back uh, it's very similar to what we saw in the uh, in the ajax xhr now the difference between the message that you see here this uh, console message is actually in a text format Whereas the one that you are getting back from the fetch is actually the what I was outputting is the uh, the JSON format. That is why you see it in the JSON object format over here. Okay, so you can always convert that to string if you need to by using stringify. Uh, but then uh, it's very very useful, like you know, for you to, if you want to see it in the JSON object model as well. Okay, so let's go back and verify if that record got added. So you will see, yeah, the data got added with the second email, and the marketing opt-in was false as well. Okay, so this is uh, two ways that you can actually like, you know, go ahead and submit the same form and you will see that it's actually going and submitting to the same um, JSON code resource and I'm getting the response back. Okay, so now we'll explore the, the code um, uh, for each of these, um, you know, methods that we have uh, written. Okay, now before we go into the code, I just wanted to show one more scenario here. So let me click on clear here. And if I actually try to submit the form, um, I actually have validation that I need at least a valid email. Like, you know, the others are not mandatory for my uh, data extension. So if I click on submit here, it will say validation error, email is a required field, right? So this is actually coming from the server side. I'm not doing any client side validation here. Um, so it's actually seeing like, okay, validation error, this is actually being passed back. And you will see the parameters that was actually sent uh, to the form are all empty except for the uh, email opt-in flag here, right? So that is also possible. So you can have uh, validations and you can return that back uh, if required, like, you know, uh, not just always the success message. So you can have different scenarios that you can have in your uh, code resource. And based on that, you can send appropriate messages back to the landing page, which you can then display to the user. Okay. Okay. Now let's look at the code for the Ajax uh, XHR landing page. Okay. So the HTML code for the UI is pretty simple. It's a bunch of text and input fields and a checkbox that is wrapped inside a form, uh, which is an ID details form uh, and a submit as well as a reset button that you see here. Okay. I also have a div on the top, um, like over here, it's called message and to show the final status message once the form is processed and the data is received back from the JSON code resource. So you'll see here on the on the form here earlier, we saw the messages being shown up over here. So this is through that diff tag that you see here. Okay. So the main area that we need to focus is the script section. Uh, so you will need to have some basic knowledge on uh, how to use JavaScript. And please note that this is client side JavaScript and not SSJS. Okay. So the first line um, uh, is to identify uh, when the form is submitted. Okay, for this, we need to add an event listener on the form element um, and then, uh, you know, specify that the process submit function should be called in that case. Okay, so in the process submit function, we need to pass an event variable E and then immediately specify that the form should not be submitted. So we use that um, uh, the, the prevent default function for this. Okay, else the landing page will be redirected to the action page. So instead of the form submit redirecting to the uh, code resource URL, we are interrupting it and then manually sending the data using Ajax. Now, because we interrupted the form submit, you need to uh, send the form data manually to the code resource page when the Ajax process starts. Okay, so for, for this, we need to collect the data uh, from the form and we use the form data object for this and specify the form ID. Okay, so the details form we can specify over here. We'll also initialize a variable to store the message uh, that we want to be uh, displayed to the uh, user in the div tag after the processing is complete. Okay, so I'm just initializing it to uh, blank over here. Okay. So now till here, the code is the same for both the landing pages. Okay. The next set of statements is what changes for the XHR or the fetch method. 
ओके सो फॉर दोज ऑफ यू आर न्यू टू एज एक्स एक्सो चार एंड फैच ए पी आई इट्स इट्स नॉट वेरी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड एंड यू कैन लर्न इट इन प्रॉब्ली एन आवर लाइक नो आई वॉज आई इट वॉज इज न्यू टू मी एज वेल लाइक बिफोर आई स्टार्ट लाइक नो लर्निंग इट एंड आई जस्ट लर्न इट बट कपल ऑफ आवर्स आई जस्ट वैन थ्रू द वीडियोज एंड देन ट्राइड इट ऑन माई ओन एंड देन इट वॉज प्रिटी सिंपल सो आई शेयर द लिंक्स टू अ फ्यू यूजफुल यूट्यूब वीडियोज दैट कैन हेल्प यू लर्न अबाउट एज एक्स uh if those of you don't know json then you can also i'll share a video on json as well and then they fetch api okay so i highly recommend you go through these videos first and then you review the code shown in this video which would then make more sense okay so for the xhr method uh we actually use the uh, http uh, xml http request object okay and its methods to send the data across to the json uh, code resource asynchronously and if you have used or learned the xhr method by now you would know that uh, we need to use the uh open on load on error and send functions on a minimum okay so the on error is also optional but good to have so that you know you can capture any errors okay but at the minimum you need the open uh, on load and the send functions okay so in the open method we will specify this as a post request followed by the url of the json code resource and confirming that this has to be an async request okay uh the the main crux of the the uh, what has to be done is in the on load function okay so in the on load method we will call the function to output the response text into our console so that we can view it uh, for debugging purposes and then uh, since it is coming back as a string we need to convert that into uh, json okay so using the json dot parse function only then we can access the nodes inside the json right so once we have the passed response uh, we will uh, retrieve the status and message values from the uh, return json okay and then add it to the output message variable which we can then assign to the div tag that we declared at the top of the html right so you will see here like you no know, the actual json return you will see the status node is there the message node is there and the parameters parameters we actually don't need i have kept it more for a debugging purposes only the status and the message is what i want uh, to retrieve from that uh, json message uh, back and then uh, add that to the output message uh, variable that we declared earlier okay now um if we encounter any error during the uh, ajax processing then we can use a, a different message to be shown in the output message okay so that is why you can use the on error xhr dot on error function okay and the final one that you have to use otherwise the ajax won't work you have to use the send method and notice that we have to add the form data that we saved earlier as a parameter to the send function only then will the json code resource receive the post data right otherwise you will when you try to like you know uh, get the uh, data from the form like you know that was posted uh, it will say it, it will not be able to find any data okay so you have to ensure that you don't miss out this step like you know collecting the form data here using the form data function uh, object and then passing that form data that you have collected in the send method okay Okay, now before I go to the uh, fetch API code, let me show you what the code resource does when the AJAX HR uh, form actually uh, sends the data over to the code resource. Okay, so if you are new to code resources, then just know that they are kind of like library files that you can store in SFMC, um, but they have a public URL when published, just like a landing page. Okay, and then there are different types of code resources like JavaScript, XML, CSS, JSON, text, etc. Okay, so the the content that you render inside each should be of that specific type. Okay, however, you can still use AMP script or SSGS as well as long as they render an output that matches the code resource type. Okay, so in our scenario here, uh, I can write AMP script uh, code and do any processing within the JSON code resource as long as I finally output a valid JSON here. Okay. And as you can see, the first part of the JSON here is to get the posted form data fields and store them in AMP script variables, so we can use them uh, later in the code. Okay. Now, for the DE that we have, we need to have a customer ID and an email for each record. Okay. The customer ID we will generate using the GUID function. Okay. So it's a standard uh, AMP script function that we can use, and it will give you a, a random um, uh, a string of uh, alphanumeric characters uh, if, uh, using the GUID function. Okay. and then we will also validate the email field and if it's empty then we won't proceed with the further processing but return a validation error back to the LP, uh, the landing page okay so you've seen that here like you know this we just saw that earlier when we tried to you know submit a form without any email okay now if we do have a valid email then we can proceed to insert the record into the data extension using the insert data function okay and then pass the necessary parameters that we have okay now depending on the insert being successful we can set appropriate status and uh, message values as well okay 
finally we set the json to be uh, passed uh, back to the um, landing page at the bottom here and as you can see uh, we are actually uh, using all the in uh, inline amp script here for all the values here okay and we are using all this uh, the status and the message or everything that we have set here and even the parameters that we captured on the at the top here all of those we can actually set in the json and then pass that back it's very very simple now this is a very simple example that i've used here um, you can change it and you can you can expand it based on your use cases and uh, logic you can have multiple different scenarios that you can cover as long as you have a valid json uh, that you have uh, the that you have like you know with values that you can pass back to the landing page it should work fine okay okay going back to the fetch uh, api landing page let's uh, quickly look at how the script differs from the uh, the xhr one so you'll see that the html everything is the same the top part over here is everything is the same till the output message declaration here right so the xhr part is what we now replaced with the uh, the fetch api code okay and and you will notice that you know, we have a fetch function in in place of um, like that xhr code and this is a promise function so if you're not familiar with promise functions i would recommend you to read up on, on the same or maybe check some youtube videos as well there are a lot of tutorials online as well where you can uh, read about like you know what promise functions are in javascript okay now we can pass the uh, json uh, code resource url along with the form data in the body parameter and specify the method as post okay now in in some documentations you will see there is an option to specify headers as well okay so but when i tried specifying the headers like using multi part form data and all that the post wasn't working as expected and i wasn't getting any uh, data uh, like you know from the form data in the json code so so then in mean, one of the um, articles i saw that okay you don't need to specify the headers if you just leave it out uh, in this particular case it will automatically detect and take it you know so i don't have to specify the headers over here so when i did not specify any headers it worked fine so in, in your example as well try not to use the headers um, like you know and then uh, if it's still not working then you can try that as well okay but in, in this example here uh, without specifying the headers it works fine okay and then you will see uh, a couple of uh, uh, then methods over here so the first one will actually re uh, uh, return the the response and then you have to call that again to get the actual json content okay so the first one will not give you the actual content so you have to call it twice and then uh, you can log that data to the console that we saw here so if i go to the the fetch api one here you will see that okay so this is the the data that is being returned is actually json so it's actually it's coming in the json format and then from that i i don't have to do another json.parse okay so in the uh, xhr method you saw that i was using the json.parse because the return was actually in text format okay so in this particular case because the data is already in json format i can directly go access the data.status and data.message and that's what i'm actually retrieving and then adding that to our output message variable here okay and then uh, similar to how we had the on error function in uh, xhr we have the dot catch here so you can catch that and then you can specify the error message if required and then pass that to our div tag so you'll see that you know this is uh, uh, very simple as well um, and then uh, like you know once you get familiar with uh the syntax for both of these uh, you can easily use these two frameworks for passing the form data to the json code resources asynchronously okay so one of the advantages with uh, using such a design uh, is that you have decoupled the form processing into a reusable layer right which means you can technically use this uh, json code resource with any front end form or landing page that can pass in these same fields to be entered into the data extension that we have and you wouldn't need to change the uh, the code resource and you'll see that for the fetch api and the xhr we have uh, both the landing pages we are using this same code resource and it works fine okay well i hope you enjoyed this video uh, do subscribe for more upcoming sfmc videos that uh, we will have in future i'll also leave these tutorial links in the description of the video so i hope you will can take a look at those as well um, like you know so to learn more about ajax uh, and the fetch api and if you are not familiar with json you can watch the json video as well okay thank you very much for watching